Hello and welcome to another Head to Head. And Keith, uh, we've broken it up this week a bit, so we haven't got one big chunky bit that might not appeal to people have different uh, interests. And last week we talked about decentralisation. We talked about the prohibitive cost of housing, particularly for young people in Melbourne, and we're both aware of how that works. Uh, predictions that the median house price down there might be $6 million in 25 or 30 years' time. Um, we talked about the co traffic congestion down there and about regional taxpayers' dollars also being funnelled into building freeways and, and trying to build a, a rail system in Melbourne. But we then talked also about uh, why government doesn't look at putting a, a true, and I say a Chinese, Japanese style, because they do it properly where we don't, do or create a, um, a true fast train solution between Melbourne and say Bendigo, uh, Kyneton, Ballarat, Shepparton, and even, as I said then, uh, you know, to the extent of uh, creating another community where affordable housing is available, quality of life is in place, uh, you're at work within 25 minutes in Melbourne, everyone's a winner. Yeah, we, we've got a lot of attributes in Bendigo to do that. We've got great um, sporting facilities, we've got great education, we've got an amazing new hospital that'll be up and running in January next year. But there's been lip service for years and years, and the only person out of all the governments, and this goes back to Balti's days, where um, the fellow Byrne from Ballarat was a decentralisation minister. Mm. That was the only time that really anything happened. It happened mainly in Ballarat, which is fair enough, because that's Murray Byrne, his name was. Um, he did it. Then I know that prior to the, um, back in the Kane government days, he tried to bring the Department of Agriculture to Bendigo. Then there was an election, Jeff Kenner got elected, and I was involved in a deputation to Melbourne, talking to people from the Department of Ag to come to Bendigo and live, talked about lifestyle, um, housing yep. needs. And there was John Brumby's wife talked about education and other issues. So there was great um, excitement at the time and it was agreed, yes, okay, the Department of Ag, why shouldn't they be in regional Victoria, not in Melbourne? Mm. Anyway, Jeff Kenner came to power and said, that's out the, off the agenda, nothing's happened. And there were already some people had moved to Bendigo in anticipation of the big move. I, I but think governments just don't do it, they don't get it. And as I said, Murray Byrne was the last one under a Liberal government. The trouble is though, Keith, and you know, I know what you'll think straight away, oh, Dennis is defending Jeff Kennett, and of course I have a shrine to she Jeff Kennett in the shed at home. I would have one if I could. Um, uh, because I have enormous respect for what he achieved. But in this instance, what I would put to you is this, that it's not a solution and not a real solution for a government to say, let's move this or that department, all right, let's say, to Bendigo, because all the infrastructure and support networks and problems all still uh, exist. So there are no solutions in that. All you're doing is moving, forcing people to well, relocate. Well, how, how do you get Bendigo. people to move? It's got to be a government that takes the initiative. You give, and, that's right, but not by striking a pen through a piece of paper and saying, we're going to move that department up there. Even though the infrastructure is not in place, those people are still going to be driving all the way to Melbourne through absolutely ridiculous uh, but they're the, not, the Dennis. Traffic. The head office is here. The, the government minister should be here. They go to parliament. They do things down there. The head office should be here. I'll give you but another we, we example. We both know it doesn't work that but, way. But you it be, can be because the, was enforced in Melbourne the every NDIS five is now, they set up a Geelong, which was great. That was a whole new department when that happened. So it can work. And you've got to be, you've got to back your judgment on these things. And then all of a sudden we saw with the Department of Agriculture, some of the small areas closing theirs down. It could have been a regional hub for Victoria. Why can't the governments do it? They've talked about it for 30 years now and they just can't get it right. So if you get that fast train running between, you can't stop at all the stations along the way. No. It's got to be various it trains, have to two be or three trains or four a day, and that's mm. all you can have. Yep. Go from Melbourne, Bendigo, Melbourne, Geelong, Ballarat, whatever, and it's got to be the fast train. The other ones provides commuter transfer from Kyneton and everywhere else in between. Mm. But it can be done because Bendigo is going to have a population in 2031 of 147,000 people. We can supply that, provided we've got sufficient water. Well, that's why I'm saying that the, the decentralisation model I favour is not one that would see a government department automatically move to a, a Bendigo area, for example. I'm saying you put the train in place and what you immediately let people know that they can get from Bendigo to Melbourne in 25 minutes on a fast train, and they can do that in parts of Asia already in similar distances. You put that word out there and then tell a young family in Melbourne that they can buy a property here in Bendigo, a beautiful 25, 30 square home for $400,000, 
they can get a lot, a beautiful home for $280,000 still here in Benio to start a family. We're talking Compared about two to, different things here, though. But they're $800,000 for a <laughs> knockdown property in Melbourne, and I know because I've looked at the damn things. <laughs> I know what you're saying with the housing, and that it, there's build two the issues. Trail, bu build but the train and people will come. You can't build those very fast trains and make them viable. The only very fast train that can happen in this country is from Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane. That's it. And that's going to cost $200 billion, as we've discussed. But now, Keith, you, can't talking, run, but you cannot run that very fast train that's going to run 250 to 300 k's um, an hour to, from Melbourne to Bendigo. The whole infrastructure, everything's got to change. And to do it is astronomical. It's not just Absolutely. a five and $10 but billion dollar look at project. It this way, though. Look at it this way, and I think you quoted the figures last week. Melbourne's population is tipped now to grow by, I think, is it 2 million people? In the next yeah, 25... Six to eight, that's going to go from six to eight mm. in the next few years. Two million people are going to end up living in that quagmire down there that is an absolute nightmare to get a car through at the moment. <laughs> Give up on trams and trains because they're, they're all blocked as well. It's just an absolute mess. That I think you're putting down the trams and trains. I think it works pretty well, except for peak hour. And the more... And well, I guess I'm I was on the Melbourne hour. weekend and I said to my wife, these trams are magnificent, these new ones that are on stream. They should have the old ones for City Circle and stuff like that. But some of those new trams are fantastic. The train system, you're getting rid of all those level crossings. Um, the Frankston line opens up this week. Right, so well, they are even changing with all things. That, Keith, you're, going to, you're still talking about dumping another 2 million I, people in there look, over I the next 25 years. I don't disagree. Years. I want decentralisation. I want but, it for Bendigo. But you're saying it's not affordable. You can't build a train Not the fast train the, the, that you're talking without about. Without the passengers. You cannot get a train from Melbourne to Bendigo in 25 minutes unless it's the very fast train. Absolutely. And that is not viable. Well, that's what I'm talking about because you've, you've got 2 million potential customers. They're going to have to live somewhere at the moment. The way things are shaping up, they're all going to end up living in Melbourne. And if you think things are bad down there now, and I think they're terrible down there now in transport terms, it's going to be add another two million people and see what happens. I'm saying that if you build the train, those two million people will find a great quality of life, affordable homes. They won't be paying six million dollars for a house down there in 25 years' time. They'll be buying properties out here, and that is why I think government needs to have vision and say. This is what we do. We build the infrastructure and we enable people to live in those areas, have quality of life, affordable housing, great community lifestyle for their kids and a young family, instead of living like we are down there that's becoming almost like Shanghai. Look, you, you're being hypocritical here because we, you and I have had the arguments many times over about the east-west roadway. Now, forget whether it's right or wrong. It doesn't matter. The fact well, was... He's, he's got, uh, a, he's got uh, an uh, input, independent a report now saying that it is the right thing to do. His own independent panel has uh, said okay. this week. You are suggesting here, saying, all right, we need trams, trains. No problems. I'm happy with that. What happened was they said, no, we're not going to build another road network to con create more congestion. Let's get the road. Then what happened, they go to the federal government, cap in hand, to try and get the Metrail happening under the ground thing. And, of course... Um, then the Turnbull government's in play. No, no, we're not going to provide that. You didn't build the east-west. So petty politics right across the country happens across all the state things. We need the train system to be working better. We need to get people off roads. We need to get them to country areas. That's right. And that's the thing that we need to do. But unfortunately, because we've got a state and a federal government and the trains will never meet. Keith, it's always good to catch up. <laughs> Thanks so much again for taking the time this week and uh, it's always good to have a spirited discussion but I just wish more people would talk about these things because otherwise Canberra and Spring Street are sitting there and they're so remote from reality, they're not getting the message. They all come out and kiss babies and uh, walk through shopping centres at election time and, and that's it, you don't see them in between. So, uh, yeah, with a couple of exceptions. But, uh, yeah, enjoy, always enjoy uh, locking horns <laughs> so we'll look forward to doing that again next week. Thanks, Dennis. Thank you for joining us too and uh, we look forward to catching up with you again next week as well.